Hello everyone, my name is Harnoz. I am currently a PhD candidate at Florida International University in Cyber Physical System Security Lab. Today I'm going to present our work, ROP, Ransomware over Modern Web Browsers. This is a joint work with Google. So the entire web ecosystem is in the state of continuous evolution. Today, the web applications are more powerful than ever. They are offering new functionalities that could previously be performed only by the native web applications. For example, now, with the modern web APIs, the web application can access the local file system of the user and even locate the user directly from the browser. Furthermore, the web applications are no longer limited by the constraints of traditional JavaScript. Thanks to WebAssembly, web applications can now run low-level code on the browsers, which makes them faster than ever. With this, we are witnessing a growing trend where the major companies are increasingly porting their native applications to the web, which makes their application platform agnostic and less expensive to maintain and update. However, there is a flip side. These new web APIs can introduce new vulnerabilities to the web applications, and more alarmingly, they can become potent tools in the hands of the malicious actors. So here are some studies from the literature that analyzes the security and privacy of these new web technologies. In the first and second study, the authors exploit the specific vulnerability within a specific API and de demonstrate various types of attack. And in the third study, the authors uh, analyze another type of API by abusing the inherent functionality of these new APIs. And in the fourth and last study, the authors analyze the cost and benefit of using these web APIs. These studies showcase the importance of ongoing research in the ever-evolving landscape of web technologies. So what we did in, did in our work. In our work, for the first time in the literature, we developed a proof of concept browser-based ransomware, which we named it ROP. Different from the conventional ransomware, ROP performs its malicious actions by utilizing the modern web technologies. Specifically, it, interact, it, it interacts with the local file system of the user by utilizing the file system access API, and it utilizes the WebAssembly-based encryption module to encrypt the files of the user from the browser. It is worth noting that the ROP does not exploit any vulnerabilities within the FSA API. Instead, it abuses the inherent functionality of the FSA API. So before we perform the impact analysis of the ROP, first we need to understand how does the FSA API work. First, users visit the website. The website would be in different contexts. It can be a photo editor or it can be a developer environment, environment. And just like with the traditional file upload process, user either uploads a file or directory to the website. And then the, the website pops up a read permission box. And once the user click to the V files button within the read permission box, the website starts to modify the user files. And once the modification has been, has been completed by the web application, the website pops up a write permission box. And once the user clicks to the save changes button within the write permission box, all of the change made by the web application becomes permanent on the local file system of the user. So this is how does the FSA API works. So we analyzed the impact of the ROP in different di directories. While the security measures taken by the, taken by the FSA API restrict the full access of web applications to the specific directories, such as documents and desktop, ROP can still encrypt the subdirectories in these important directories. In addition to that, ROP can also encrypt in the directories such as the cloud integrated directories, external storage devices, and network shared folders. While some cloud pro providers such as Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive implement a versioning scheme to prevent possible ransomware attack, other cloud providers such as Apple's iCloud does not implement that type of versioning scheme, which makes them vulnerable to the browser-based ransomware attacks. So we also evaluate the effectiveness of current defense solutions, ransomware defense solutions against this new type of threat. Firstly, we have static and space solutions. While these static and space solutions might be useful for different types of ransomware samples, it, they can be evadable by code obfuscation. So dynamic and space solutions are also face difficulties in detecting or preventing browser-based ransomware attack. First of all, by nature, it's a file malware, so there is no actual payload for a dynamic analysis environment. And in addition to that, all the actions, malicious actions done by the benign process of the browsers. So the dynamic and space methods might introduce false negative, negatives within their current form. And uh, lastly, as Rob utilizes the wasm based encryption module to encrypt user files, it does not introduce any encryption-related system calls on the user system. So while the extracting key 
during the browser based ransomware attack is theoretically possible by taking the heap snapshots of the web application, it is not practical, as these heap, snap heap snapshots might introduce resource overhead on the user system. So as the current ransomware defense solutions are face difficulties in detecting browser based ransomware, we developed and implemented three different defense solutions that work at three different levels. Our first solution is a malicious file identification via hooking, which operates at the browser level. During our analysis on the FSA API and the ROP, we see a distinct behavior on the user files. Specifically, to modify the files, the website first reads the original file, and then it creates a swap file and writes the change to that swap file. So basically, that, that swap file becomes the modified version of the file. And to make the change permanent, the website swaps the original file with the uh, swap file. So we see that the hooking the specific FSA API function code, specifically write function, allow us to analyze the both modified fi files and original files. So we aim to detect the malicious file, mo file modification. So we analyze the different types of modified files and encrypted files, and we identify, identify two key indica indicators. These are the entropy and, entropy and size differences of the original and modified files. This is because the, while the encryption operation often increases the entropy of the file, it keeps the size relatively unchanged. Whereas the benign modification increases or decreases the size of the file by keeping its, its entropy unchanged. So to implement this defense solution, we, we collect the rich file data set that consists of 5,000 files, and we created their benign modified and encrypted versions, and we calculate their entropy and size differences after the modification and, and uh, encryption, and we trained at five different machine learning classifier, and we achieved 99% uh, accuracy rate on average. While this approach promising to detect encrypted files from the browser, it is not a silver bullet, as the highly adaptive attacker can arrange the size and entropy of the encrypted file to evade that defense solution. So in our second defense solution, we aim to detect browser-based ransomware by monitoring the activities of the web application. Specifically, we monitor the FSA API function calls, browser process system calls, and the file stamp activities of the web application. And we see a distinct features between the benign and the FSA malicious FSA usage. Specifically, while the ROPS encryption, it reaches the files in the directory one by one, in the benign modification also, such as the VS Code, it reaches the same file more than one time. But these defense solutions can also introduce false negative alerts as the benign application can also show the same behavior as the ROPS. But the findings from this defense solution can be utilized by the current ransomware defense solution to increase their accuracy in detecting browser-based ransomware. And in our third defense solution, which operates at the user level, we implemented and designed a new user interface. In the, we, during our analysis, we found the following issues in the current permission boxes, which is current implemented in the FSA API. First of all, they look very similar, so user cannot even differentiate between those between these permission boxes. And secondly, security risks associated with the FSA API are also not mentioned in the current permission boxes. And also, the changes made by the web application are also not stated. And lastly, all of the powerful capabilities of the FSA API, such as the possible access to subdirectories, are also not indicated in the current permission boxes. So we designed a new permission boxes, and with these new permission boxes, we aim to better inform the users about the possible, possible security risks associated with the FSA API, but it's also still under the user's control. It is still under the user's control, so attacker can still trick the user, but that defense solution can easily be integratable to the current implementation of the FSA API, so that user does not need to install any type of software to use that defense solution. So here are the concluding remarks of our study. In our study, for the first time in the literature, we extensively need attack vector for ransomware over modern web browsers. And we conducted the comprehensive impact analysis of this new, new type of ransomware on different operating systems, different directories, different cloud providers, and the different premium antivirus solutions. And we also evaluate the ineffectiveness of the existing ransomware defense solution against this new type of threat. And we propose three different potential defense solutions to mitigate this new attack vector. So here are some references that we used in our work. Thanks so much for your attendance.